males typically communicate consent non-verbally. Females typically can communicate consent verbally. But females think males communicate consent not verbally. Males think females c- communicate consent non-verbally. <laughs> and so it's this mismatch that uh-huh. rarely gets talked about. I mean, during Me Too, um, you know, we were talking before we started about autism and our kind of shared experiences with, with, with folks with autism. And um, during the Me Too movement, I had, uh, I can't tell you how many males that were on the spectrum who said to me, look, I, I'm hearing that there are women or people in general who may verbally consent to sex but are non-verbally saying no, mm. that this is too much. And those guys on the spectrum were saying to me, I can't do that. I can't, I, I can't read the nonverbal cues. That, that, that's part of my issue. Mm-hmm. And they were really, really nervous about how to make this work. And so we did a lot of work, you know, talking about how to identify consent, but also, as you said, how to, how to also keep it sexy. Mm-hmm. So how does that work in the legal system, though? So if so much of it is nonverbal and then downstairs they were talking about and I, I loved it so much. There are um, there are consent violations and then there are consent mistakes like a yeah. right. And they are different and intent does matter. And I know so many people that have taken a consent mistake and tried to make it into this big legal thing. And to me, that's so gross because the legal and social ramifications of someone that gets uh, found guilty of any of that, it's its a massive consequence. So I think you need to take that into account. So what, you have something that comes to a uh, court case and right. it's so gray and it's not like most people are recording it. So theres it's all kind of hear, hearsay. He said, she said, how yeah. does that get handled? Like how, what are the outcomes typically? Um, complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, First, uh, you know, that language, you know, consent mistakes, consent violations, you know, sexual assault. We like to think that's on, that, that, that that's on a pretty clear spectrum, mm-hmm. but it's really not. And certainly the court system uh, doesn't handle some of that nuance very well. Um, the, uh, you know, the, there's a case I'm involved with in Asia right now where um, the judge has, has really come back and said, you know, it's a simple yes or no. Was there consent or not? And where people like me come in and kind of upset people is where I say, you know, it, it's complicated. Um, so, for instance, with choking sex, uh, one of the things I see is that people may identify, yeah, I consented to sex, but then all of a sudden when my partner started choking me, um, I hadn't consented to that. And so then at that point, this stops being consensual. Um, one of the things with, with alcohol, for instance, um, you know, alcohol for women uh, dramatically increases their ability or willingness to express sexual arousal, to express sexual desire, and to agree to sex. But alcohol on board for a female uh, decreases the chances that she's going to orgasm, increases the chances that she'll engage in unprotected sex, and increases the chances that she will later identify the, uh, the sexual encounter as non-consensual.